Hi, thanks for checking our channel here. This is um, kind of a part two video of a repair that we did on a um, old Speedrite unit. This particular model here, uh, Speedrite 120. Um, it came to us for repair. I'll, if you haven't seen that video, it's about four, five, six videos ago I'm on, a, on our list of videos. If you go to uh, the description area, I'll put a link down there where you can watch the first part of how we tested this thing. But this is all being gutted, but the problem with it originally was a bad capacitor and that was it. That's all it needed to get it up and running again. But the tr the output voltage it was only putting out like 2 kV at the transformer. And I was like, oh, shit, okay, we can put a new transformer in there. Well, this old one, this is from like 1990 or something like that. It's older, older unit. The transformer on this version is molded into the, the whole shell of the unit. It's, uh, it's just it's part of it. And, you know, you can't get this shell and transformer anymore. They don't, they don't sell them. It's been probably been 20 years or 20 plus years since they even built that model so I said shoot what, what are we going to do because I have a transformer because they made like a, a 2 joule and a 3 joule or something like that a 2400 and a 3200 model as well as a 120 model and those at least the bigger ones or at least later versions the transformer was a separate piece it was like screwed down two couple spots in the case so you can unscrew pull the transformer out Put it back in, screw it down, plug your wires in, and, and you were done. Well, they don't do it that way anymore, um, or the, the, whatever. But we've got. Um, so I talked to the customer. Cause I got a transformer. I got like five of them still in stock for these older sp uh, speed rights. And I said, well, let me find out if I can get a find a case of some sort that I can put this his guts in and this basically build him. A, a custom, sort of custom unit. We're going to use all good parts and just wire it up in there. And so I gave him a price to do it. And we're actually making it stronger than what it was uh, originally. It was like 1.2 output joule. And I, I did a, sort of making a video on the, the retrofit of this. It took me a little over an hour to do the whole thing. So I didn't bother making a video, but I will show you the inside and kind of walk you through what we did. Um, and everything, but I gave him the price to do it, and he after I found a case that was big enough to hold all the stuff in there, um, he was like, "Yep, let's do it. Sounds good. Can't can't buy a new one for that price, especially when we make it a little stronger." And uh, jewel wise, it's about two and a half, two point four, two point three jewel now. So we basically doubled the amount of power out of the thing. But we had to put a little bit bigger capacitor in there and double the power out of it. Um, so this is a where he's got this installed at. It's not outside, but it's inside of a barn, but it's really drafty, and there's a, a big area where wind can blow through there, and, um, you know, water and moisture can work its way in there, so we got him a waterproof case, and um, here's the inside of it. Pretty basic. This is a circuit board that was in his unit. We pulled it out. I drilled three holes, and I got spacers little nylon spacers, plastic spacers between the board and the shell of the unit to kind of cushion it and that way when we're tightening it down, we're not tightening into the board real hard but those nylon bushings or uh, spacers will absorb some of the tightness as our uh, pressure as we're tightening it down. So we had a bolt there and two over there and there's a transformer that goes in there. There's the holes for it. We drilled two holes. We put um, a long bolt in with a spacer in between to, to, to allow as you tighten it up, that way it wouldn't tighten down on this and just bend and break that ear off. So we got this nylon rubber, not rubber, nylon plastic uh, uh, spacer there. We got one over there and one over there. And there's this output board from his original one. This output board was bad. Um, the resistor on over here was looked good. Once we got the thing running again, the light would barely flash. It wouldn't hardly flash at all. I tested that resistor that was sitting right there, and it was open. It was very very bad it was bad so we put a, um, a 68 thousand ohm resistor and i didn't it was like a three watt two watt resistor i didn't have a 68 thousand ohm resistor so i had um i took two 100k ohm resistors wired them in parallel and which makes 50 thousand ohms um and so i was like well that's better than 100k because uh so the, the it didn't um it allows energy to come into the bulb Allow it to flash, and uh, these are one watt resistors, so not two or three watt, whatever they had in there before. But most of these output boards, the resistor size 
uh, wattage wise like one or two watt anyway so um, I just put one watts in there solder them together in parallel wire them in there and there we go and to keep this board here and this pasture in place we just use some um, old some 3M double sided foam pads and uh, press it in there and as time goes on that that's that adhesiveness of the, of the sticky tape will cure more and more and get more stickier and stick to the plastic more and more uh, better as time goes on so he, he was pretty thrilled about that that we could get him going and then we drilled a couple holes here we reused their um, the connections that were on the, the original bolts and uh, I thought I'll put them on the bottom like well you know it might just be easier just to put them on the front so we drilled a couple holes labeled it ground and fence like the original one was and um, this is this cord we just plugged it on there it sits right down inside here which the other one had um, a little strain relief uh, thing that went down here. I bit that and pulled it out, but it just, it was like 35 year old plastic and it just um, crumpled and fell apart. And um, they had, um, you know, put some, because it was cracked there at some point in time, because old plastic, they'd uh, pot, potted or put some uh, like JB Weld or epoxy or something like that on there. And this one has broke out really bad at one point in time. So they had a big flat washer on the inside and the outside they kind of absorbed some of the cracks that were there to block it off and then they put that on there but I um, didn't do that of course this is brand new plastic and um, um, fits in there really well so there's no lights flashing on the front of it now because um, I want to keep the amount of holes in it at a minimum and there is a couple of um, screw terminals on the back here or not screw terminals but mounting holes one there and one there so he can have to move his um, uh, mounting holes from his original uh, mounting spot and have to widen them out a little bit because it's a little bit wider of a case but uh, we'll plug it in here clicking not very loud because the transformer is you know, way down inside the package there of this housing case here and so it's a little softer you can't hear it as well plus I have an air conditioner unit going right next to me about six feet away so it doesn't help either but it's clicking and we'll put a screwdriver across there and I'll also show you the um, we'll do a voltage check on there show you what it's putting out but put like a lightning bolt symbol on the ground symbol for so you know which one's fencing ground see it there's a nice little spark out thing and now we'll put the tester on there we'll do a load test on there we'll show you what it's putting out we'll do a peak voltage first so we'll look at this number here we're getting about 8.2 kV out of it about a little about 8,000 volts. We'll go to a 500 ohm load. Uh, 5.1 kV at 2.4 joules. The next number is 200 ohm. I don't have a 300 or a 400 ohm resistor to put in there, so we're going from 500 ohm down to 200 ohm. The closer you get on the number on ohms, the, the worse of a short it is, and load it is between the fence and ground. Uh, we're still about 2.4 joules at 3.4 kV at 200 ohm load and I think we did 100 ohm earlier when I got this going and it drops down like 1.5 or 1.9 or something like that at 2 just the uh, range yeah. so it's about 2.5 joule output so you went from 1.2 to 2.5 roughly so um, he was happy. He's already paid for the repairs and stuff like that. He actually had like two other units here. One of them I think was too far gone. It was a um, brand it was. It was obliterated inside, and it would take a full rebuild, and it wasn't worth it. And they had another one here, another brand. Uh, it was just a bad board. It hit by lightning, burned the board up. So we put a new board in there, checked everything else out, worked good. So, but yeah, he's got a you know, good working unit. It's a waterproof case. So when we close that lid on here. On the transformer, or the power cord, I mean, sorry, it sits in that little groove. Line it up. Like 
pulls the tackle box up. It's good to go. And he's out on the. See, nothing's loose. Shake the shit out of it. Nothing moves around because everything's bolted in place. And then the transformer, or the capacitor, and that um, output protection board is. Um, we're using some good quality double sided foam tape on there. And that ought to cure as time goes on. It's, it's only been stuck to the side of the case for like an hour. But um, as the next, you know, 24 hours goes on or whatever, that, that stuff will get, be like almost like glue. And it won't come loose unless you pry and prod and pull it off. And then it, it'll come loose with a screwdriver pry on it. But it's good to go now. I'll probably write the model number or the name on it again. He had his um, farm name on there. And I might put like speed right, something like that on there. Um, maybe if there's a serial number on this unit. And I put the serial number on there as well, but the serial number... Oh, wait a minute. If there's a sticker inside. Look at this. 1989. This was built uh, September 26th of 1989. So this thing's, uh, yeah, about 35 years old. So, but yeah, this part of strain gauge left over. Look at that. This old plastic. And I, I, we, I thought about putting these on there, these lenses on there, but I had to get a perfect square hole. And then we have to figure out how to put the, I probably have to mount the board up. But then you have to block that hole off with this stuff. And then the, the board uh, sits down so low that with this light being there you would never see it the board sits like this far down below it's a little red LED and it sits like this far away so you'd never see it in there and this light I guess we could have done this one put it like right there but he didn't care about the lights he says as long as it clicks works I know it's working you know, I'll use my fence tester to test the line so he, that's what he's what he's going to do so but thanks for watching the video this is was a fun one to do it took a while I probably spent between fixing it originally about 15 minutes and I put probably another hour into doing all this and trying to figure it out on how to put things together and mount it and bolt that thing down and do it the right way because I didn't want to do it but one time and be done with it so I took my time so I probably have over an, I definitely have over an hour uh, into this thing but you know he's squared away he's done he's paid for he's happy he's got to pack it up ship it out with his other unit and he'll be uh, getting in the mail here in about three or four days I would imagine but anyways, thanks for checking out our channel. Until next time, we'll see you guys later on.